part three of episode 26 of Uncommon Conversations. My name is Jordan Farmer. My guest today is Spike Healy, who is a uh, scuba instructor, marketer, and many other things. <clears throat> we were in the middle of, uh, I was in the middle of telling a story about how people can seem crazy and have substantive points to make and other people can seem very reasonable. And uh, actually, <clears throat> It's saying you're unable to join. Let me, uh, maybe this will work this time. We'll see. There we go. Yeah, yeah. We finally got it. Cool. Yeah. All right, then. <clears throat> so I was talking about Alex Jones, and he's this over-the-top Texan who's a the notorious conspiracy theorist and is always getting crazy. And then Piers Morgan, who's this British cat who has this very calm demeanor and very sophisticated, very controlled. And so if you weren't listening to what they were saying, you would think crazy, over-the-top, ridiculous person, reasonable, calm, and informed person. But Piers Morgan was saying, uh, was basically being emotional and saying, with all of these children dying and all of these deaths, how could you say that people still deserve to have your Second Amendment? And Alex Jones was like, well, here's the thing. Violence and guns are not one and the same. The UK has much more gun control and much more, a much higher rate of murder. So it's not really related. And he, and he was bringing up FBI statistics, like really, really credible statistics about it. He printed them out so he could show them right there. And so that showed me like the, like the, that, that first second sort of read on a person and like, do they seem crazy? Do they seem like one of those kinds of people that is as sometimes, especially with politics, that's sometimes um, not representative of who they are. And same thing the other way, just because someone seems like the statesman doesn't mean they're not a corrupt piece of dirt selling you out, you know, just because they sound nice like that. They're not really related, but like we do have this expectation for like the professional political class, but we're human beings. Like we're human beings, man. And we just got to be human beings. You can't like, I don't know. I feel like we, a lot of people basically say they expect, not that they expect, like uh, everyone expects politicians to be politicians. But there's a difference between expecting a little bit of fluff and how that sort of happens and saying it's a good thing or saying, like, it has to be that way. Some people legit, like, if if you're not selling them on exactly what they want to hear politically, they don't want to listen to you. Like, they just, they have no interest in absorbing it or hearing it, um, which is really, which I think is kind of interesting. <clears throat> so there's like this, um, we expect them to be corrupt, and if or we expect them to be anchor people on the news, we accept them to be salesmen and to be manipulative. And so, if they're not, it's like there's something wrong. <laughs> there's something like this isn't a political. This isn't a political person. This isn't a statesman. This isn't a whatever. When we've had you know 40 years of statesmen, and and the system is more broken for it. You know, it's interesting. Interesting that there's that automatic read of a person and then there's like the reality of the person and, and the situation. It's interesting. Dude, you're an interesting guy. I very well, much you. appreciate you, you taking some time. I mean, it's probably no skin off your back to sit sit down and talk with somebody for two hours, um, but you can really get into it. And like I said, the way you communicate is pretty unique in terms of what I found. It's not just... Uh, arrogant which is nice to hear and i appreciate well, that thank, well thank you very much very much i'm i'm trying to do that i'm trying to be a good communicator i'm trying to be 
trying trying to do it the right way and um yeah i'd be trying to do a podcast with someone anyways but i'm trying to bring value and part of the magic of of a conversation is both sides and the and the back and forth and and that couldn't happen without you and i don't choose to talk to people that i don't think would be interesting to talk to not necessarily like there was one guy who just didn't have anything to say he was just one of these people that just repeats the political points he's sort of been told to repeat um or, or sort of picked up on the hints to repeat not necessarily like told to repeat um <laughs> and so that was even a good example of how you can have a, a conversation with a regular everyday sort of guy who doesn't have a lot to add and it showed that they didn't have a lot to add, but it showed that you could still have a nice conversation and still find some middle ground and stuff. Um, and so luckily you are not that kind of a guest. <laughs> luckily you have been, uh, uh, it, it's just been exceptional, man. I've really, I've really enjoyed this. I feel like you're the, the back and forth has been like complete. There's, it's not lacking anything, not lacking for any, any action in the conversation. And, and we're both listening and focused and trying to, have a real back and forth. So, um, so I appreciate your words. It's affirmative for me because it's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to communicate well and do this the right way. And, um, I mean, we're talking for two and a half hours. I don't do that with every single guest. So, you know, uh, yeah. you're welcome. But also yeah, thank I'm you, man. Hungry. You know, you're, you know, you, you're making a sacrifice by coming and having this conversation and engaging in politics when you previously have had no interest in doing it. So, you know, I appreciate you too, sir. Yeah, man. Uh, I definitely, I don't know if you had any expectations. Like if you were, if we were to talk about a bunch of issues, it would probably glaze over my head and, and I wouldn't have a lot to say. As you see, you start getting me talk about the Iceman or breathing techniques or scuba diving training. Uh, I could go in. But I guess we all kind of have those areas of expertise. But I also like to just have a conversation and listen to people. That's part of the reason I like my job. That's why I don't, one of the few things I did like about working at the hotel is I just got to, yeah, I was forced to talk with people, but you never know what you're going to get. And sometimes it's pretty interesting and you're just like, wow, I just learned a whole new perspective uh, of just listening. Sometimes there's a back and forth, but it's cool to just see what people have to, to share and to learn a little bit more on that, that range. Absolutely. And, and I'm not, I'm, I'm the political policy person. So I don't need every other person that comes in here to also only want to talk about policy. Honestly, that would get really boring. So um, the fact that you have knowledge, I don't have an experience. I don't have interests. I don't have, and that you could bring that into the conversation and you absolutely like you did not, you were honest about what you didn't know. So you didn't bring any bullshit into the conversation, which I am eternally grateful for. Like what you had stuff to say on and what you like felt like you could say you would and whatever you just didn't have stuff to say on. You were just like, I just, I don't know. And that, that, that is, that is amazing and important. So you brought, just so you know, you brought a lot of value into this conversation yourself. It was not a one way thing. And, right. uh, and for anyone listening or any future guests, it doesn't have to be about politics. It's about, for me, it's about uncommon conversations <laughs> and, uh, and, and uh, I'm finding a mixture of sort of what I, what I talked about with the political stuff earlier and how I try to talk to people, finding common ground and then creating uncommon ground out of that, out of that common ground, trying to take things into a new area or talk about things in a, a new way or just an authentic way, which, you know, even if people have heard it before, maybe they'll hear it a little bit of a different way or just hearing it again is good. So, um, but yeah, yeah. I, um, I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate this conversation. It's been solid and um, we'll do it again sometime for sure. We'll catch up when we have uh, some other news things or, or whatever you would want to talk about. We can dive into next time. Dude, definitely. And it's actually extremely easy to either, not say anything or just ask a question when we don't know what to say. That's something I've found uh, keeps me out of talking over my head. And saves you time. I mean, you're, you're not, you're not trying to put fluff out there when you don't need to. You're just like, I don't know. Let me know. Tell me what's up. <laughs> so you have a good one, brother. Thank you so much for coming on. God bless you and uh, keep up the good work. And uh, so will I. <laughs> Perfect. Good deal. Take cool. it easy.
Chao. Sí.